Hello, my friends. I'm Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biocar Hospital. Today, as uh, every now and then, about every week, I'm thinking of a program, of a blog, uh, of something to tell you about a very important health issue. And to me, this has now become my quest, actually has been for many years. Telling people what to do and what not to do. Telling people what to do so they never come to see me as a doctor. We can be friends, but it's not fun to be sick. It's not fun for anybody, even in the best of the cases, being sick is suffering, is money spent, is time not programmed. It, it, it can completely put upside down your whole life every time we get sick. And the more I go, the more I realize that health is one of those intangible things that makes life worth living. Because when you're ill, uh, nothing is fun, nothing is attractive, nothing brings anything to you. It's, it, it, it's, you just want to be secluded and, and, and crying and suffering and so forth. So, but when you're healthy, well, then that's the time to be uh, joyful. That's the time to travel, to see people, to make a barbecue, to talk to friends, to watch a movie, etc. So, for many years, when I see people, many times I wonder what would have happened if, number one, I would have had the chance to talk to somebody five years ago, ten years ago, anything like that. But number two, and that's the most important part, and that's why I want to talk to you today, the most important part is what if you follow up what I'm telling you? Of course, it is very easy to say, well, doctor, it's just that it's not fun. Uh, l let me tell you something. Somewhere, somehow, our new generations are thinking that they're entitled to fun, to comfort, to just living it up. And you know what? They're compromising their lives. They're compromising their very own survival their longevity, their compromising their uh, well-being, and even more important is they're compromising their children's well-being. And the subject that I have chose today, which I already began talking about it in a different blog that you can link to, talking about diabetes. I just made a program talking about insulin and insulin resistance, which is at the core or the most obvious uh, culprit for diabetes. And I discuss a lot of things about insulin, what insulin is, because we talk about it every day. But what does it do in the body? It's, it's really a miracle hormone. It does so many things. Without, without insulin, we don't grow. We don't produce protein. We don't get bigger and better and faster, etc. We don't have energy to produce anything in the body. But not, not only that, insulin is a very anabolic function, has a very anabolic hormone. What does that mean? It means that it promotes growth. It makes the cell makes protein, your own protein, out of food components, but you can now create your own heart and muscle and brain and every single protein. Without insulin, simply there is no life. And we had the opportunity to see that in years before the uh, beginning of insulin, where we saw people with diabetes dying of diabetes very, very sick. Until one day, uh, with the discovery of insulin, they applied it to one patient, and what they saw was a miracle, a miracle before their own eyes. This was a dying person, 
They were just waiting for him to die. This was at the Toronto General Hospital in Canada. And then the doctors applied the insulin. And when they applied the insulin, not only the patient improved, but improved be before their eyes. It was happening right before their eyes. It was not like, come back in a week and see if you feel better. No, it started changing everything. And that was a miracle. We discover the hormone that controls diabetes and how we can fight it off. But in many cases, we're like the people that wins the lotto. How many people have won millions of dollars only to be in disgrace or sick or dead very shortly after? Because they didn't know how to control that wealth. They thought being rich was drinking or gambling or, or doing risky things. And some of them died or some of them lost everything. It's exactly the same thing here. We had insulin and then we could manage diabetes for the first time in history. But then we started changing our lifestyles. We started overeating, we became sedentary. I mean, after the war, because this, is, this really began happening very seriously after the Second World War, uh, we had a lot of comfort and we thought we, we deserved uh, a lot of comfort and a lot of compensation for all the suffering after the war. And then we started eating more, doing less, then we got an automobile, and then we got a machine to do this, a machine to do that, and, and as we stopped washing our clothes, or whipping our cream, or doing a lot of things, our physical activity level went down and down. We didn't walk anywhere, we took an elevator, uh, etc. And then we sat all day long, either at a desk or somewhere else, but at the same time, we had more money, so we started eating more and more and more. And this reflects very, very closely in a phenomenon that I have seen and observed through the years. When we have a child, many of us might not have had the best upbringing, economically speaking, so we had certain restrictions. So we think, well, my child is not going to go through that. So if he wants this, I'll give him this. If he wants one of these, I'll give him two, if he, et cetera, et cetera. So we create an environment where children are overeating. Because if they want an ice cream, we give them 10 ice creams. If they want a soda pop, we buy them a case. If they, whatever, we, we feel many times by, by giving all these to children, we're being good parents. Think again. And, and, and the worst part is that in many cases, this, this gratification to children is out of our own guilt because we are not uh, spending enough time, we're not spending enough education, we're not uh, hugging them every day, so we buy them something. And that way we buy a little bit of comfort for ourselves. Nevertheless, we started creating a problem which is insulin resistance. Because the same way that insulin helps sugars to go into the cell to produce energy, when there is an overwhelming amount of sugar, then the insulin blocks. The cells block the insulin. Come on, stop it, stop it. It's, it's too much. I don't want that much sugar. So they stop insulin from working. And what happens is then the pancreas sees a lot of sugar in the blood so it releases more insulin. So you're getting two times, three times, 10 times the amount of insulin, yet your cells are getting the same amount, if not less energy than before. And there's going to be a time where the pancreas fails because it cannot keep up with the pace. It cannot keep producing the, the growing amounts of insulin because we are overeating and eating uh, 
with very short periods, we eat every time, and then it collapses. Finally, it gives up, and then it doesn't produce enough insulin. You go to the doctor, you start losing weight, you start feeling bad, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you have diabetes. And your life will never be the same. So, it's very important to know this. And remember, insulin not only manages sugar, but it manages protein synthesis and growth. So, what happens with diabetics? They start losing weight. I have seen many people where the first symptom is weight loss. Watch it. If you begin to lose weight, take a second look. It's not always good news. Of course, we all love losing weight, but that's because we planned it, because we went on a diet, because we started going to the gym, etc. We started doing something to get rid of those extra pounds. But some people will start losing weight out of nothing, out of nowhere. And they come and they say, Doctor, uh, I haven't changed my lifestyle, I haven't changed my diet, I, I actually think I'm eating a little bit more, but now I have lost six pounds, eight pounds. And then the next question is, are you very hungry? Because when the insulin fails, cell satisfaction fails, and it demands for more food. So diabetics, an early sign of diabetes, is you get abnormally hungry. And you get thirsty, because that sugar in the blood is going to bring water out of the cells. And then you urinate a lot, because that extra pressure in the, in the blood vessels are going to make the kidney to eliminate more urine. So, you lose weight, you are very thirsty, you are very hungry, and you urinate a lot, go to the doctor, immediately. This can be diabetes, and simple tests will tell you. Do it. Do it for yourself. But you see, once again, how important it is to be aware and vigilant of what happens in our body. And I want you to stay with me because I'm going to tell you a lot more of how things happen and how we can prevent them. Be back. You are with Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biocare Hospital. And today we're talking about diabetes. We have already talked about insulin and insulin resistance, which are uh, the more obvious culprit of the whole problem. But being insulin, a hormone that affects just about every function in the body, it is not a mystery or should surprise nobody that having diabetes means a very complicated metabolic condition. And I say complicated uh, because it affects just about every function in the body. And it's just a chain reaction that begins with insulin resistance. That's why insulin resistance is so important to fight it, to avoid uh, getting into that condition. And even if genetically you are going to be diabetic, you can, you can reduce the impact, you can delay the onset if you play your cards right. That's the entire importance of a message like this. That's why to me it's so urgent that you listen to a message like this, because there's so many things that we can do to change our lives and feel better, I was telling you that uh, I don't know exactly how, and I don't want to get into that, it might be a subject of a whole conversation or a whole seminar about why we have changed 
so much the ways we live. Our physical activity level is almost nothing. I mean, it is almost ridiculous that you have to get a sneakers and a whole outfit and go to a place because you want to do physical activity. As if you cannot have physical activity at home or at work. As if you cannot just go upstairs and downstairs and vacuum clean. And you put a vacuum cleaner that does it all while you sit and watch TV. Well, let me tell you, there is a British study that shows that vacuum cleaning, when you do it manually, consumes a lot of energy, particularly if you do it well. And what I mean by doing it well is you move furniture, you put things, you clean the drapes, etc. If you vacuum clean a room in, in, a, in, in a very thorough way, you're going to be sweating. So, but we don't do it. I, you have to buy an outfit and go to the gym. Start cleaning your home. Start doing your garden. And at work, uh, just don't ask somebody, oh, I, I just sent a copy to the printer. You bring it to me. No, get up and go. Don't, don't ask for a glass of water. Get up and go. Actually, stand up and sit, stand up and sit. There are many, many research works that show us that just by moving a little bit at the office can be very beneficial. So what we need is we need the muscles to move because the muscles help insulin a lot. And I have told you when we talk about uh, insulin and insulin resistance that the muscles and the fat of the body, just two tissues, make two-thirds of the whole body weight. That's how important they are. So we want to make sure that our muscles do their part. And if we move and, and sweep the, the ground and use the broom and use the vacuum cleaner and uh, mow the garden, etc., all these things are going to be very good because the more we move, the better off we're going to be. If you have diabetes, one of the best ways to lower your sugar level and you bring up your tolerance to, to, to the sugar situation is by having physical activity. And again, I don't have to go to a gym. But if I'm sitting down and I'm even watching TV and I have a couple of jugs of milk, they don't have to be one gallon, they could be half a gallon, whatever you can do, and just keep moving them up and down Keep those muscles moving, for goodness sake. Anything you do to move your muscles, a stationary bag, I'm not very fond of them, but if that's what you do, what you have, do it. Any exercise is better than none. Any. So, what we have to understand is that we have a body that was made to move. And we stopped moving it, then we had a problem. On the other hand, I was also telling you when we talked about insulin that we have a counterpart for insulin, which is glucagon, which also comes from the pancreas. So one pushes sugar into the cell, the other brings down sugar from the liver, from the fat deposits into the blood flow when, when the insulin is not working. And when is not the insulin working? When we don't have food in our tummies. And you say, well, I always have food in my tummies. Well, think again. What happens when you go to sleep? You know, nature knows that at night we are not going to eating or we should not be eating. Let me rephrase that. We should not be eating at night. Why? Because our bodies are programmed to bring down sugar from fat deposits and from the liver into the blood flow, so insulin and all that is at rest during the night, or should be at rest during the night. But what we do? Where is the five o'clock dinner? Nowhere to be found. We're eating at 11 o'clock, 
one o'clock in the morning, we got up in the middle of the night and have a snack, a sandwich, or a glass of milk. You know what happens? What happens is that that food is going to be on top of the food that the liver is bringing down from fat deposits and so forth, and everything is going to be distorted. There's a very interesting, uh, and shows very well what I'm telling you. They gave a group of people a good breakfast. You know, ham and eggs, and bread, and milk, etc. Just a, a common breakfast. But the, very well measured, very well controlled. They took the, the, the sugar, the, excuse me, the breakfast with everything in it, and then they monitored sugar afterwards. And they saw what they expected to see, that the sugar level went up, and then within two hours it was back to normal. That was breakfast, eight o'clock in the morning. Then, that night, or in a different night, they repeated the same food, another breakfast, but this time at nine o'clock at night. So they had ham and eggs, milk, etc. The same, exactly the same food, but at night. As expected, the sugar level went up, but within two hours it was almost half down. It took four to six hours to come down. Why? Because on one hand, we were putting food through our mouths, but also the liver was bringing down sugar from deposits because it was night and glucagon was at work. So we duplicated the effort for the body to get rid of all that extra sugar. And one of the problems where we build resistance is by eating too much, too frequent. I mean, we don't go hours without food. We have breakfast, we have a snack, then we have a coffee with a donut, then we go for lunch, then we have a snack, then we have popcorn, then we have this, and then we have dinner. So we bring in food every now and then, every now and then, every now and then. This can be overwhelming to the body. And what the body does, it blocks insulin action. So we have all that extra sugar that goes nowhere. What does the liver do? Turn it into fat. I don't have to tell you that if you eat too much, too frequent, you know where that food is going to. It goes to your love handles. It goes to your whole body, you're going to gain weight, and then you're going to start damaging your whole body and the whole architecture of your body. Not only that, but once again, you're not producing quality protein because insulin is not working. So it's a lot more complicated than just a sugar level. And I have to tell you something, you know, there's recent medical research that shows that insulin resistance can begin at the womb. If your mother during pregnancy was doing exactly what I'm telling you, eating too much, too frequent, the child is going to begin creating insulin resistant. And by the time you're born, you're already doomed. And I don't have to tell you, just go to a shopping mall and you're going to see that like parents, like children, fat, fat. Of course, they also share the same eating habits. Thin, thin, because they probably share some of the physical activity habits. So I'm not telling you something that's far-fetched. I'm not telling you something that is not easy to understand. The more I see it, the more I understand it. 
That's why you see, and sometimes they tell you the problem is that uh, diabetes is hereditary. Yes, it is hereditary. But you don't have to have it. Because you inherit the genes. But the expression of the genes can be managed. So you can get away without actually developing the disease, or you can postpone the onset for years, if you know how to play it right. And all those years are going to be of health and enjoyment. So that's what I mean when I say you have to educate yourself, you have to learn. I want you to follow these programs, I want you to read the blog. You can, we can send it to you in PDF if you're the type of person that rather read than listen or to watch. I'll make it, I, I'll make it easy for you. I'll try my best for you to get information. But that's not everything I have to tell you. I still have to tell you more. So I want you to be with me. I'll be right back. I'm Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biker Hospital. And today, we're talking about diabetes. We're talking about diabetes, insulin resistance, but we're talking about diabetes as a disease. We all know it's a disease. It's a metabolic disease. It is an inflammatory disease. It is a catabolic disease. It is an energy uh, or lack of energy disease is a weight loss disaster. It's, but it can be a disease of just about every organ. And that's what we're going to talk about for a little bit. Because we have many times, might be for our own comfort, but we many times consider that diabetes is a disease that is going to affect our sugar level. So, if you watch the TV ads, well, they're very positive. You have diabetes? I'll give you this, and your sugar level is going to be fantastic. And they show you running and enjoying and living very happy. But nobody tells you, you have to make lifestyle changes. They don't tell you. They just tell you, you take this and you're going to be fine. The other thing that nobody tells you is, if you have diabetes, you have to take this or that or the other, but it's going to be for the rest of your life. In other words, if you're diabetic, at this point in the 21st century, there is not a cure. There is not a way to go back. You're diabetic, you are diabetic for good. And you can manage it better or worse, but you're going to be hooked to some sort of medication. And of course, to follow up, medical follow up, laboratory follow up, etc., etc. So, it is not just a sugar level disorder. I, I wish it were that simple. Because the same way that Banding and Best at the Toronto General Hospital discovered that insulin could change that for the better, well, they didn't see at that point that that was be not enough. And the joy for the discovery of insulin was rapidly obscured by the development of uh, insulin resistance and diabetes in staggering numbers. The amount of diabetic people diagnosed in 1950s is just a poor shadow of what we have in the 2020s. It's just nothing. 
the amount of people that are diabetic uh, in, in the world, and particularly in the United States today, is overwhelming. Uh, many people, of course, doubt that we're going to have the economical capacity to deal with it. Because not only is the diabetes, it is the disability, is the lack of function, is the loss of sight, is the losing a limb, is a losing a kidney, is having a heart attack, is having a stroke. It affects every single organ. And I have to go back to this anabolic action of insulin. If we are not producing enough protein, and we're not producing quality protein because of insulin problems, then what happens is that every single tissue is going to begin to, to suffer because it doesn't have the, the push to do what it has to do. And once again, this is protein synthesis and stimulating growth. So we cannot do that. So if you look at a person with diabetes, you're going to see how the muscle mass begins to diminish. That's why people with diabetes lose weight. Not because they're, not, they're thinner, uh, just thinner or just because they're fitter. No, it's just because they're losing muscle mass. And as you lose muscle mass, you lose a lot of things. You lose equilibrium, you lose your gait, you lose your ability to do things, and the more you lose it, the less physical activity you can do. So it's going to be a vicious cycle in which you're going to lose more and more and more and more muscle capacity. And if you see a person with diabetes for, that has had it for a long time, they usually have very poor muscle masses. But that also shows in a very important organ of the body that's everywhere, the blood vessels. The blood vessels are going to suffer a lot, and they're going to suffer a lot in the lining of the blood vessels. They can get inflamed. And what happens in a pipe if the inner part is thicker? The flow of the fluid, whatever fluid it is going to be, is going to be diminished, is going to be distorted. We lose what we call the laminar flow, in other words, the flawless flow of things. We lose it. And that creates, in turn, the possibility of having clots at different parts of the body. And as that happens, we lose, for example, perfusion to the kidneys. So the kidneys do not work that well. And what happens is that with time, we're going to start having kidney function deficiency. But the same thing happens to the limbs. And remember, when we talk about uh, circulatory problems in the limbs, we always look at our legs. Why? Because they're very distant from the heart. Our hands, on the contrary, when the blood is pumped, they are first serve because they are really readily close to the heart. But think of your foot. Your foot might be four or five feet from your heart. And not only that, the blood that goes there has to come back to the heart. And going backwards is going against gravity. So the blood coming down has a little bit of a problem. And if you have a weak vessel, you're going to see how the veins that bring this blood up cannot hold it anymore in, in, in a good way, and then they start to dilate, and you start having a lot of problems, and circulation through your lower limbs is impaired, lower blood flow with more resistance for the blood coming back up creates a huge inflammatory degenerative damage to the, to the area, to your ankles, to your lower legs. 
and then you start losing tissue. You start losing tissue, and you, there's not a mystery to uh, anyone that a long-lived diabetes can bring a lot of ulcers to your lower limbs. Ulcers that are very difficult to handle and that are very painful. And of course, we know that eventually that blood flow could be so impaired that you develop a gangrene in one limb or the other, or both, and you end up with amputation of the lower limbs. So you lost your kidneys, you lost your limbs. What else can you lose? Well, uh, you lose your eyesight. Because the same way we're talking about the problems of circulation, the microcirculation of the retina of the eye is very sensitive. It's fantastic. We all are a real miracle. We all a real miracle. Look at yourself in a mirror and look at your eyes and look at your mouth and look at your nose and think of you and think how you can be aware of yourself and dream and, and talk, etc. We are a miracle. But that miracle has to be sustained. And like in the case of the eyesight, it's very tiny little irrigation to the retina. And then we begin to lose that. And one of the problems that you're going to see with diabetic people is we start losing our eyesight. So it's going to be a domino effect because, of course, one will make the other worse. If you have a damaged kidney, that's going to damage your eyesight. That's going to damage the blood flow to your, to your legs. The problem in your legs will reflect in every part of your body. And the same way the, your eyes, your kidneys, and everything is suffering, what about your heart? You're more prone to have clots. This is a heart infarction. But you could also get them in your brain, and you're going to have a stroke. So diabetes is a very complicated disease. Don't think of it as a sugar disorder. It's a completely wholesome metabolic disease of the whole body. There's not one part of your body that's not going to suffer. Your skin, your mucosas, your lungs, every single organ in the body is going to be affected. So, there is no way you can think of it as uh, in a very light way. I think it's a very important disease. And it is even more important the fact that we're seeing it more and more and more frequent. And if we're seeing more frequent, if we're seeing it in younger people, it's the time to push the alarm. Something is happening. Can I do something? Can I change all this? Can I begin actually from the pregnancy? If, I'm, if I want to have a child, am I ready to face the compromise, the responsibility of being healthy for my child to develop in a healthy environment with all the possibilities of being a successful human being? Or I want to keep on smoking and partying and going to Paris and, and, and eat everything I, I want and do whatever I want because that's what doctors and hospitals and so forth are for. They're going, they should take care of the problem. We have to take responsibility if you want to be a parent, if you are a parent, if you're a teacher, if you want to deal with yourself, you have to take the responsibility. And I'm going to tell you how you can do it very easy in just a few more minutes. You are with Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, Medical Director of Biker Hospital. And today I'm doing a podcast uh, talking about diabetes, diabetes as a disease. And 
to tell you what it is and how complex it can be. It can really be a complicated disaster because it's a real metabolic disaster in the body. And all this information is so important that I want you to know that you can get it on a free PDF, on a free video, on a free audio, so, so you can share it with people. I think it's important that people know what diabetes is and go beyond the TV ads and the things that tell you if I give you this to control your sugar, you're going to be fine. No, you're not going to be fine if you only control your sugar level. It, it, it goes beyond that. It is much more complicated. But at the same time, the good news is that if I play my cards right, if I have a strategy from the beginning, and you can be in your 20s, you can be a teenager. Still, if I want to have a responsible life and be good to my body and be careful with my body because I know my body is going to deliver a lot of things. It's going to create my wealth, my family, my dreams, my everything. If I want to be good to my body, then I have to start as early as possible and as soon as possible and do everything I can to fight the challenge. Because diabetes is right out there and it's growing in staggering numbers. You just have to look around, ask people, friends, schoolmates, workmates, church members, how many of you are diabetic? How are you coping with it? So, you do not want to join those numbers. So, the first thing, the good news, is that if I know how to handle this from the beginning, I might not ever develop diabetes. Even if genetically I'm predisposed to have it, I could block it or I could even postpone for years, if not decades, the onset of the disease. But if I'm diabetic, then I have to understand that I have a very complex problem in my hands that I cannot approach with one pill or one thing. I have to be very integral. I have to be very complementary. I, I now know that very simple things can be of great help. Like, I'm going to change my food. I'm going to change my eating habits. I'm going to change my physical activity. Those are the ABCs. If I start doing that, I'm going to begin well. I have to avoid problems like cigarette smoking, alcohol drinking, chemicals, all these things that could be in my food supply. If I, if I take care of all those things, once again, right in my hand, right within my reach, I'm beginning very well. Now, there is something that's easier said than done. And that is when I talk about good eating. I could go for 10 programs like this and just touch the surface. But there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of resources. There's a lot of videos and blogs, etc., where you can learn and learn and learn. And the more you do, the better off you're going to be. It used to be, this is a species that now it's been extinct, that we all had a housewife at home. And she made all the food for us and made sure we ate well and we ate what we should. That doesn't exist anymore. So we have to take that part in our hands and we have to learn how. And again, easier said than done. So I ask you to join me. I ask you to follow me. I ask you to ask questions. I, was you, I, I want you to, to call our doctors or click on Biocare Hospital and, and learn more about it. 
And, and don't be shy. You can ask any question, any time, free of charge. Uh, doctor, I like asparagus. Is that okay if I do this? Doctor, I like uh, beets. What benefit can I get? Anything. You see, I, 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 there is a common saying that says that they're not such, there's not such a thing as a dumb question, but there are many dumb actions. So ask a question. Even if you think it's dumb, ask a question. And that's going to help you out to learn better how to eat. We all know the ABCs. Fresh, local, cook from scratch, uh, avoid packed foods, chemically processed foods. Uh, we all know that. But you can go step by step, learn more and more. And for that, I'm at the social media of your choice. Ask a question. If, you have, if you're thinking of doing something for you or for your family uh, this Sunday, uh, let's talk about it. I'll help you. I'll advise you. I, I answer personally all my emails. So don't worry. The, the great thing about emailing is you can ask the question whenever you want and I can answer it the same way. I could be at home. I could be anywhere and still answer you immediately. So don't be shy, ask questions. But then if you have diabetes, please don't make mistakes. You have to know that you have a complex metabolic disease in your hands, a systemic inflammatory disease, that as we speak you're losing protein, you're losing substance, you're losing energy as we speak. So the sooner you act, the better off you're going to be. I would urge you to take a look at a biocare health getaway. 10 days at the hospital. You're going to be thoroughly tested. You're going to be tested also for inflammatory markers. We're going to test you for a lot of functions, immune functions, etc. So what we're going to do is review the whole condition and kickstart a program for you. That also, hopefully, will give you the commitment to change your life for better. The profit you can get from it, the benefits you can get go well beyond your expectations. We have treated diabetic people for decades and we're very happy to see people that either began with a mild problems that have gone through many years without any need of medication or people with serious diseases that have uh, gone through, through uh, a very good condition and they are improving and they're living their lives to the fullest, etc. So I want you to think of that because this is serious. I will not be telling you to do that. The same I'm telling you, call me and I'll help you to guide you to face uh, the, the problem from the prevention point of view. I'm telling you, if you have a problem, if you don't feel you're getting the progress that you, you think you have, then come down. You have to come down. You have to do it seriously. You have to do it with the doctor, with the blood test, with the live blood, with everything. A very common problem with diabetic people, for example, is the increase in, in blood thickness. And that's very easily controlled with proper management and supplementation. And once the blood becomes a little bit thinner, just a little bit thinner, blood flow improves. And as blood flow improves, everything starts to change for the better. That's going to be one of our objectives, to fight inflammation, because we want those blood vessels to open up. The swelling many times you see in your legs, it's within your blood vessels. So think of a blood vessel that's inflamed, it reduces its caliber. Let's bring it back to normal, or as close to normal as possible, so blood flow can come back again. 
and heal. Life is in the blood, definitely. So blood is healing. Blood has everything your body needs to heal, but it has to flow, and it has to flow abundantly and freely. That can happen in just 10 days in a biker health getaway. If you have a vacation coming and you're diabetic, planning doing this trip, plan in, in being together. Let's meet, let's talk about it. Let's start you on this program. You're going to enjoy it. This is not a hospital when you're going to be tied to a hospital bed. You're going to have a total different routine. You're going to have award-winning food. And you're going to see that having good food is enjoyable and fantastic. All you need to do is to turn your attention. All you need to do is shift. We have to shift our ways. And not only that, but you're going to learn a way that hopefully is going to turn you in a preacher. Hopefully you're going to go back to work. Hopefully you're going to go back to your own church. Hopefully you're going to go back to your own family and teach them what and how to do it and bring them into your club and make a party and make a Sunday barbecue but choosing healthier choices and making everybody happy and healthier. And that's going to be to bring joy and I can tell you it can bring longevity. So think of it. See that, that, that what I'm telling you makes a lot of sense. And any questions, any comments, call me. Do you have a toll-free number? Contact me. Any social media of your choice. And watch these and other blogs. And I would specifically recommend you to watch the blog about insulin and insulin resistance. I want to see you next time. Please come back with me for the following broadcast.